In this video we're going to look at the concept of detection limit and how this applies to a given measurement from a given sample. The sample is cellulose so we expect to see oxygen and carbon and we do, this is the oxygen 1s, this is the carbon 1s and the amount of carbon and oxygen in this sample is significant enough that we can see these peaks very clearly. However there is a suspicion that the sample may also contain nitrogen and what we would like to do is work out whether this measurement was sufficient to identify the existence of nitrogen in the sample or not. The ability of XPS to measure a small peak is a function of both the sample itself and also the acquisition conditions. The acquisition conditions determine the sensitivity for the instrument and therefore the signal and noise that we'd expect. For pulse counted data you expect the noise to be the square root of the counts per bin. So if the counts are high, then the noise is relatively high. So this can have an influence on whether we can identify a small nitrogen peak, especially when we have a step here that follows this carbon 1s. And the fact that this carbon 1s appears, or this oxygen 1s, is a function of the sample itself. So the characteristics of the spectrum is determined by both sample and acquisition conditions and both have an influence on whether we can detect a peak or not such as this nitrogen 1s. One way to investigate whether we can actually identify nitrogen is to use the element library. The element library can be used to search for peaks. Let me just remove the inset tile so that we can see all of these peaks. So Having searched these data for peaks that then correlate between peaks for a given element, the only two elements that were identified were the oxygen and the carbon. And that's because we've got peaks at oxygen, peaks at carbon, and we have correlating peaks that are OJ peaks. In the case of nitrogen, this is the peak that we're wondering about, well, there's no evidence of peaks at the nitrogen 1s or the nitrogen OJ, so taken together, the element library has only found two elements and since it's only found two elements if I were to try and create regions from the element library it will only create regions for these two elements that were found so what I need to do now is find a way of forcing the creation of regions and I'll do this by adding labels to these data and these are indicated as peak labels when I use the quantification parameters dialog window on the regions property page I can say create from labels and this will force the creation of regions based on these labels that provide the link between the element library and these peaks so we end up with relative sensitivity factors that are brought in from the element library and a set of regions that correspond to the peaks so we can just adjust these a little bit perhaps Let's have a closer look at the nitrogen. So we can see that there's very little in the way of nitrogen here when we look closely. So this correlates with what the element library found, or rather didn't find. Nevertheless, there's a next step is to go to the regions property page and we'll create a table from these regions that will include a standard deviation for the percent area. So there's the region and there's the percent standard deviation and they're all set to zero because the calculation has not been performed as yet. I bring up the quantification parameters dialog window again and we've got a single survey spectrum from which these regions are being calculated so I can press the calculate error bars and this will do a Monte Carlo simulation and produce a set of uncertainties for these regions. We've got uncertainties for the oxygen and carbon that suggest these values are, are genuine and match the idea that we've got peaks that we can see. Looking at the nitrogen you can see that the uncertainty is quite large. This is one standard deviation and the value that we've calculated for the nitrogen is more like two standard deviations. So we don't have a high degree of confidence that we've got nitrogen at all based on this value. So before we draw too many conclusions from this, let's just verify all these regions are as they should be. So if I load them and then slide through, uh, well, we can see that they're not quite. So 
I've adjusted that one incorrectly using too large a display so now that I have these readjusted I'll calculate the error bars again and verify the conclusion and once again we come up with uncertainties that are definitely supporting the use of these peaks as being oxygen and carbon whereas once again the nitrogen well this is again sh about two standard deviations indicating that we're we don't have a high degree of confidence in a nitrogen peak in this part of the spectrum however we can alter the calculation by rather than using the nitrogen peak here we could use one of these nitrogen peaks and these are all nitrogen that have been measured using the same conditions as the survey spectrum but with an ever increasing acquisition time so the signal to noise should improve as we increase the acquisition time and we need to now verify that we can identify a peak such as this one using the same method applied to the survey spectrum I wish to quantify now the survey against this nitrogen 1s that was measured for 80 minutes and in order to do this I need to have these two in the same row and one way of doing that would be to take a copy of the survey spectrum so here it is the copy and here's the narrow scan data collected at 80 pass energy just the same as the survey spectrum just a, a longer acquisition time and I need to align these so what I'll do is I'll assign the same experimental variable so I'm going to rather than have two I'm going to set these both as three so here we have them they are now both aligned and I'm going to remove from the survey spectrum that I copied the nitrogen so I have nitrogen here I need to make sure that I use the same relative sensitivity factor so we've got the survey and that's so we'll display both of these in tiles so we've got the survey with the oxygen and the carbon and then we've got a narrow scan that was measured for longer but nevertheless these are peak areas that will be calculated in counts per second EV so we can quantify these data against the survey data just as you would do with high resolution spectra but to do this I'm going to have to use a quantification table that is defined and I'll define it on this survey spectrum and we'll include the relative sensitivity factors so we can see these I'm just going to delete the region table so we can see it clearly and I still have these two selected so I'm now going to do the Monte Carlo calculation that's based on both of these data and I can do this using a right click and then select the error bars calculated for regions there's no auto fitting involved so I'll take that off and it's indicating that these are the two VAMAS blocks that are selected here that will be used for the calculation and so now I have a quantification table that is being constructed from the nitrogen 1s on the nitrogen 80 minute VAMAS block and it's being combined in a quantification that is giving similar sorts of results that we had for the survey alone so this is the label that you see here that corresponds to this nitrogen but there's no nitrogen region let me put regions on so you can see no nitrogen region and here we have the region that is used in the calculation over here the uncertainty now because of the extended acquisition time has meant that the uncertainty in the standard deviation is now 0 0.007 so this is significantly smaller than the value that we can include in an atomic concentration calculation so at this point we can see that while small the nitrogen peak is now w well within the detection limit for these data.
and this has occurred simply because the nitrogen region has been singled out and measured for considerably more time than was devoted when the survey measurement was taken.